here tonight, I don't know if you guys are aware, but we are all tonight at New York City's only gay bookstore. Yeah! yeah. And I think that's really rad, and I think we should all do that really to support it whenever possible. Um, a lot of the stuff that they have here for sale, you can't find anywhere else. Um, like, literally, like, it doesn't exist anywhere else. This isn't like a thing of, like, fuck Amazon. It's like, you can't buy this shit anywhere else. <laughs> Anyways, um, I love it here. You guys should give them all your money. Uh, and this is a new thing that I've been working on, and it's called uh, Supernumerary. I took tomorrow off work. I'm taking tomorrow off. I rode the train home and ran into Perry. He's just moved back to town from Europe, Paris. He left a job there and an apartment there, and a boyfriend, a whole life, and now he's back. I'd love to see him too, maybe even tonight, you know? I'm going to that nightclub near the water, uh, the beach. I went to an opening at a museum downtown, art from the other side of the planet, foreign perspectives, a very glamorous and global affair. I'm friends with one of the curator's sister. We all went out to dinner, my friend and her cousin and her parents and the parents' friend. The curator, the sister, couldn't come. One of the parents was a doctor, and their friend was a retired secret agent. She was really tough. They told stories about emergency rooms. The parents bought spectacular wine, and I drank two glasses and felt religious. There was a younger cousin there at dinner, too. Nice young man. On his way to California, he got one. He's the one. He's the one moving to San Francisco, sight unseen, to take a job in technology. Digital ad sales. I said, SF is a really great city. I'm sure you'll love it. <laughs> I came home and I smudged my bedroom. I smoked Luke Skywalker OG, Girl Scout cookie, blackberry, lemon sour diesel, blue dream, Jack Herrera. I made a salad. I smudged myself, my lungs, face. I wish I could get cleaner. When, I think, will they finally, will they ever make a soap that gets you clean enough, you know? Like, invisible? I can never decide what to wear. Like, what is the correct answer? As if, like, no, it is a problem. And how do you solve a problem? How do problems get solved? By force of will. By decision, by choice, so I choose. I pace my room and burn incense and smoke cigarettes. I have tiny antique ashtrays, brass elf boots, hidden among the shelves of my houseplants. When my, excuse me, when my grandmother died, my mom and her sister cleaned out Booby's apartment. They let me come in and take my pick of her possessions, anything I wanted to keep for sentimental value, not furniture or something. I chose ashtrays. I was in college. I've kept all those ashtrays and I still use them. I decide to wear that Bicala t-shirt with, with the sparkly, smiley faces and my Conde Garçon denim short pants. Just comfortable, you know? It's a nightclub. <laughs> Perry sends me a text message. Is the party tonight going to be fun? I don't know my text message back. I've never been. I'm going around midnight. Is it money to get in? He asks. It is, I say. I'm supposedly on someone's list, but I don't know if I get a plus one. I don't know if Perry wants to be my plus one tonight anyways. Perry says it's too late for him. He's jet-lagged. He's still on Paris time. We'll catch up another night. It really is on the water, you know, the nightclub, across the street from the river. Which river is on the west side? <laughs> the Hudson. Yeah. Right? It's the Hudson, right? Yeah. It was a long walk. I noticed, stoned, that the street... The ground seems to sort of slope downwards a little bit towards the edge of the island. I was walking like a toddler, you know, <laughs> I show up alone. There was drama at the door. I sort of assumed I could just go in, but I had to make sure they knew I was on the list. I'm on two people's lists. The guest list twice. Actually, I double-checked. Accidentally, you understand. I just wanted to make sure that I could get in. I forgot to mention either of them, the lists. You know, to the girl working outside. I didn't see that she had a clipboard. She doesn't have a clipboard. How would she check if I was on the list? I go back outside and say, I'm Billy, I'm on the list. Whose list, she says. I say, Smeagol's list. She says, who else's list? I say, what do you mean? She says, you're on two people's lists. Whose is the other list you're on, Billy? Oh, I say, I'm on Smeagol's list, and I think I'm also on Claire's list. That's right, says the girl at the door. She hands me a pink ticket for free entry. I get inside, the place is huge. Great, great sound, cool records, awesome DJ. I wonder, it's cavernous in here, if this place, if this nightclub used to be a warehouse. I think maybe it used to be a garage. It's so big. Maybe they used to keep boats in here. Maybe it was a bar for sailors, but tonight it's a gay nightclub. I'm watching people dance to that young rapper's single. You know the one. It's a hit. He's a hit. We, we're all so proud of him. We all feel really good about him, not like the other ones. You know, I met him when he was 19. Our mutual friend asked if I thought he was cute. She asked if I thought he was cute, and I said, yeah. She asked if I thought he was too young. I said, 
probably, maybe, do you think so? Now, he's too famous to go on a date with me. Whenever I see him, we say hello, though, he's very sweet. He once told me that I am aging better than any other white person he knows. <laughs> I blush. I turn deep, deep red but you couldn't see. We were in another nightclub at the time. It's a funny crowd to be here alone. Groups of friends, couples, heterosexual Euro trash soaking up local culture, that one go-go boy the one from last Saturday night. These are real go-go boys. They do head scans, shake their anemic milk-white asses displaying bruised brown wilted rose anuses, lilies of the valley, roses, pansies, the soft machine. Am I gonna be sick? Am I gonna have to wait in a bathroom line to puke? Some lonely guys uh, dancing in my section looking real hopeful. A real don't leave your drink unattended vibe. I don't have that problem. More like accidentally drinking other people's drinks. Lots of striped pink tops, precious few tan lines. I have a farmer's tan. I haven't been to the beach. Not once all summer. I wear t-shirts to work. I work at a nonprofit. I heard there was a smoking lounge here, an illegal one. I want to find it. The host shows up in a cape. It's also a basketball jersey, but it's a legit cape though, too. Problem, I think, solved. I was only going to stay until 1.30, but it's 1.45 and I want to stay now until 2 a.m. Who am I? I never do this. On a Tuesday night, no less in man motherfucking Hatton, I still haven't found the secret illegal smoking indoor lounge. I guess you carry the smoking section inside of you. A temporary, a temporary autonomous zone. There are people smoking just like wherever they are, indoors, but my heart's not in it. I pretend I'm in Berlin. If I was in Berlin, there would be ashtrays everywhere on any waist-high surface, and, but there would be much less hip-hop on the sound system. You know what? Never mind who I am. Who are these people? Things are getting blurry. Smoking outside, white people leave in groups of four. Two girls, two guys. I thought it was Monday. Oh my god. A line of cabs down the block waiting. Very organized. This much at least seems very German. So Deutsche. Sitting on the stoop outside the nightclub, I see young Henrietta. She's new, a new girl. She's new on the scene, new to the city, hot new young thing. She's maybe 20. I read her internet for a while. I fed from her feed. She's smart. She's not afraid to speak truth to power. She loves fashion. She loves music. She loves art. But really, she's an actress. I keep telling her to call herself a performance artist, to call herself an actress slash writer, because she is, you know? She thinks I'm being hyperbolic. I'm proud of her, too. Young Henrietta represents the future, and it looks bright. It looks pert and smart, and deep down, beneath the plunging necklines and sparkly makeup hidden in designer hands, Bags. I think young Henrietta looks, I can see anger there. I'm proud of her. I can't wait to see what she does next. Since this was written, she's now walked in two, count them, two New York Fashion Week runway shows. She's a star. We're sitting on the curb outside the nightclub and young Henrietta asked me for a cigarette. No, wait, she wants to pee first. Do I have to pee? Sure. She says, we'll go have our cigarettes after. I follow her inside. She leads me through some dark corridors. The music is thumping. We cut the bathroom line. The beards and tank tops glare at me, but no one would dare say an untoward thing to young Henrietta. We go in the bathroom together and there's one toilet. You go first, she says. I demure. Oh, fine. She sighs. She pees. She turns around. Oh, I turn around to give her some privacy. Are you embarrassed or something? No. Okay, your turn. Oh, Henrietta, what? Are you pee shy? I am, I have to say. What? I get stage fright. I don't believe you. But it's true, so I don't pee. We leave the bathroom together and the guys are glaring at us. I bet they're mad because they think we were doing drugs together in the bathroom. I wish, but that's not me. I don't even know if young Henrietta does drugs. On our way out, I lose track of her. I wander around alone. I buy a drink, a $15 glass of tequila. I pass by the second dance floor. You know, the smaller one off to the side with the separate DJ and the separate gaggle of girl doll hosts, the emptier room? It's not the smoking lounge I'd hoped for. Some kids, some fashion students, drape the asymmetrical sportswear are hosting. They come over to me and say, hey, we're trying to get people to come to our room. Will you tell your friends to come? OK, I say, I'm by myself. <laughs> Tell them, the boy says, that we have bottles. And he hands me a clear plastic thimble full of warm vodka. I down it. I smile and make a little bow, like, thank you. That's sick. I turn to go back outside. So tell your friends, he calls after me, there's more where that came from. Outside on the curb again, orange street lights making everything look sort of cheery. I love it here, don't get me wrong, but there are some things I really hate about this city about America, and the street lights are pretty high up on this short list. Why do they have to be these disgusting orange sodium lights? In Germany, there are drastically fewer street lights. Maybe a fraction, maybe an eighth of the street lights we have here, maybe one tenth. And the best part is, where there are street lights, they're small, dim, and gray, like sad old angelfish. They're more comfortable in Europe with darkness. I run into Mama Chang. 
She's so happy to see me. He worked as a stage manager in a play I was in a few years ago, a sort of surrealist, sort of punk rock, sort of very downtown production of a Tennessee Williams play. We called him Mama Chang because he was the boss. He knew where and when we were supposed to be. He's younger than I am, probably. I didn't know Mama Chang very well, but he seemed nice. We catch up on the sidewalk. He likes my sparkly shirt. He likes my funny pants. What has he been up to? He's been working at the opera. No, silly, he's not a singer. He's a supernumerary. It pays well, he says. Sometimes it's fun. Usually it's pretty boring. A lot, Mama Chang says, of waiting around. He's with a friend from out of town, George. His friend George is in business. He wears unremarkable clothes. He's just in town for a meeting tomorrow morning, but Mama Chang dragged him out to the nightclub. He wanted to see what it was like here. He says, so you're an actor? You're a performer? I say, sort of. Mama Chang says, he's amazing. I love him. <laughs> Mama Chang insists that George takes a photo of me. He says, aren't you here with anyone? Come hang out with us. We go back inside together. The show hasn't even thought about starting yet. The drag queen. Tonight's queen. She's not even here yet. Who is she? <laughs> His friend George asks me if I want a drink. I say, you don't have to do that. Mama Chang says, let him his money. He's here on a business trip. I say, I want another tequila. I say, thank you, George. You don't have to buy me a drink. He says, it's OK. He gives me some line about, you know, someday, if I get famous, I mean, someday, when you get famous, remember this, remember me. Don't say no one ever did anything for you. I smile and say thanks. But I'm thinking now that my memory isn't so great, I'll probably forget. And I'm thinking now that I can never repay this, such, or any generosity. Thanks. Ah.